as far as like everything else, like personal affairs, you just start going down by a checklist. Uh, it's like a mental checklist. You know, you gotta you gotta take care of uh, your, your wills, power of attorneys, the two cars that I, you know, you gotta what's gonna happen with the cars, what's gonna happen with the, like you know oil deliveries during the winter time. All that stuff has to be set up, and it's uh, sometimes it can be very frustrating, but you just have to do it. What I've actually done is I've taken the pressure off of her because right now she doesn't need that. She just needs to concentrate on her job and the kids. That's her main concern. Um, my concern is taking care of everything else before I leave so she doesn't have to worry about that stuff. That's what I'm trying to do right now. Mm -hmm. um, the less that she has to worry about, the better I'm going to feel about leaving. Mm -hmm. Only because the first time that I went, um, I didn't have a girlfriend. And, well, I had kids, but they weren't. I was with them every day. So this is going to be different for me because I've been with her and the kids for like four years. This is going to be a big test for both of us. Like I said last time, I didn't have to worry about that, and it was a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So this time's really going to be, I think it's going to be tougher than the last time. Yeah, well, a lot, of the, a lot of the guys that I saw that were coming back, they almost had to get to know the other half again, when, especially when you're gone for that long. I mean, a year can change you, and a year could change that other person. So you kind of have to start over almost. Um, I'm going to say there's plenty of support. Uh, as far as like when you come home, there's things that you could do. They have like couples retreats that you could go to. They have daycare. So you guys can concentrate on each other. I know I've seen a lot of that. Um, there's a lot of counseling available. There's, there's, there's plenty of stuff available uh, to us to work that stuff out. Yeah. Well, you kind of, you have to look out for each other. If you see the signs of somebody having problems, then that's when you need to sit down and talk with them. I mean, that's just common knowledge. But I, if, there's a, if there's something deeper going on, then there's, there's, there's plenty of outlets that they can go to. Now, me being in a supervisory position this time over, I have to look out for that stuff because I don't want it. For me, I don't want any of that to slip through the cracks. That's just me because then I wouldn't be doing them a service. Yeah, but, you know, I kind of, now that I'm in this position, I, I put my stuff on the back burner, which is really what you're not supposed to do but I do it because I want to take care of them first. That is my first priority is taking care of them. Mm -hmm. Me, I come second. Mm -hmm. That's just how I do it. Right. Yeah, right. I, I, I gotta have some time for myself to gather, gather my thoughts, gather myself together, you know, if something goes on or whatever, but mm -hmm. uh, that's my first priority and then I'll take care of myself. Right. But through right. the, through the experience that I've already had, I know how to deal with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. cool. No, well. you, you have to have you have to have that authority line, but then you also have to have a personal line because these guys need to know on both the authoritative level and the personal level that they can count on you no matter what. Mm -hmm. But sometimes those lines get mixed up. But then you have to reestablish it because mm -hmm. army regulations. Yeah, you gotta do this, 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 and this. Personal, you know, it's it's a it's a different set of rules almost. Mm -hmm. But like when you're on duty, it's t it's time to rock and roll. It's time to get stuff done. This is how it's gonna be. Blah 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 blah. Question it later. We'll talk about it after we're done. Mm -hmm. And that's the same way you gotta be with personal stuff. You gotta get the job done first. And then, you know, we can sit off to the side on our time off and talk all day long. I have no problems with that. Mm -hmm. um, yep. but I, my personality dictates how 
I'm pretty much going to run like a tune. I am a very interpersonal person. I need to know each and every one of those soldiers, you know, what their, who their wives are, how many kids they got. That's just me. But sometimes that authoritative line disappears for me because I'm more into being personal with them. Every time we have a drill, we usually have, um, we split up um, into our platoons and into our squads. And um, sometimes what they'll have us do is they'll have like our squad leader will come up to us at the end of the day. Like, for example, um, Sergeant Scott, my squad leader, he'll come up to me at the end of every drill and um, usually at the end of every day and, um, you know, kind of ask me if I have any concerns or if there's, you know, stuff that I haven't uh, been able to work out, like, you know, money issues, you, you having trouble getting stuff taken care of for deployment, you know. So they, they usually try and get that stuff taken care of, but mm -hmm. I, I haven't talked to First Sergeant directly yeah. about any of that. Um, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit nervous. I'm definitely, I'm definitely excited as well. Um, I don't know, like the reasons I joined were mainly uh, just like excitement and adventure. So <laughs> now I, I think I've grown up a little bit since when I joined and that doesn't seem as realistic to me. So I don't know, I, I don't want to have to shoot anybody. It doesn't really sound very fun, so mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of afraid, I guess, politically. I've, I've, uh, I've definitely changed since when I joined. Uh, joined when I was a junior, so I don't know. My opinions have, have changed a lot. I've tried to educate myself more, and uh, now I don't. I don't feel the same way as I did when I joined. So that makes it a lot rougher. But I'm gonna try and use it as a positive experience. Strategy. Yeah, I, I really just, I, I'm trying to stay positive. I'm hoping that. I can just experience as much culture as I can while I'm over there. Um, I hopefully try and take what I can out of it. Um, I don't know, it's, it's kind of disheartening sometimes. Uh, I feel like there aren't as many people in the military that care about, um, I don't know. It, it seems like there's maybe too many close-minded individuals, but maybe I'm just not looking hard enough. Mm -hmm. I, I, I tend to find that I don't really have many people whatsoever that I can actually relate to or talk politically with. But, mm -hmm. I don't know, I, sh I should see that in a positive way, I guess. It's six, it's six and two. Mm -hmm. um, there's two years of what's called IRR, and, um, Basically, from what I've heard, the reality of it is it sounds it's it's more like you're in for eight years because you have a um, you know you have the commitment for six years originally, and then at the end of that, you can sign up for an additional two years and they'll offer you bonuses and um, things of that nature to get you to, I don't know entice you to join um, or or re-up for those extra two years and if you don't you can leave but you may be called back you're on a list of names that can be called back in a service and if you get called back you don't get a bonus or anything